before we start talking specifics in training, I'd like to address the number one priority before effective training can be executed with purpose and consistency. We will discuss goal setting. Before setting your goals, first, do an honest self-assessment. Figure out where are you right now? What have you already done in the sport you prefer? What is your history with injuries? So that you can set limitations or find appropriate physical therapy exercises. And then take the second step of setting goals exciting to you with your personal why question clearly answered. I want to stress this the most. If there is a single thing you take away from this video. When picking a goal, you have to understand that you are choosing a process, not reward. If goal is truly difficult for you, you have to be excited about the journey and potentially only reaching the start line or partial completion of this goal. Hopefully multiple of your whys are clearly answered before you start so you can start training with less tension less resistance and more excitement about the process visualizing what you're excited about for months or a year or five years down the line without having to ask yourself why am i logging 60 pounds of water 3000 feet up the hill doing weighted pull-ups or going on a long run length of which most people would find a bit mental why is a fundamental question runners and climbers as well as people interested in the subject are constantly asking the simple answer for me is that's my passion when i was 300 pounds my why was to get healthy and i was tired of all the fat jokes kids used to be vicious when i was growing up and made fun of me for being foreign not speaking english having the same clothes every day many other things terms like microaggressions did not exist. So I wanted to lose weight and learn English. Priorities, right? Now my priorities shifted to being in a position of training for first ascents and big mountains and hopes to attempt the Rainier Infinity Loop's fastest known time. With total mileage of 140 miles with 44,000 feet of elevation gain. Small steps took me from there to now. And it was very difficult, but when you face difficulties that are a lot shittier than breathing fresh air in the outdoors, you start thinking about difficulties differently. It's a huge privilege to even be able to dream big, even if the goal is partially doable. But even in my earlier days of getting into sports, I always had goals I truly was excited about. Not to get the reward, but for the process of learning and improving. You gotta have a reason to train. It's nothing complicated. Being a multi-sport mountain athlete is what I like. For someone else, it's dancing, curling, or comparing your bicep size to all the other bros in the gym. All of those require less sacrifice than climbing or trail running and lead people to get laid a lot more, trust me. Maybe not curling, I don't know. They did beat climbing to Olympics, while trail running isn't even in the talks. So we are pretty much the bottom of the food chain here. Especially alpinists, they get laid the least. One easy to understand concept about goal setting is SMART, which stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. Personally, aside from being specific to what I am training for, long term, I try to pick more or less achievable short-term goals and keep my long-term goal batshit crazy, to be honest, because those are the things I visualize during the hardest training sessions or when I'm lacking motivation to work out. Good music, a forced smile, and visualization can work wonders on those days. Even if the goal I'm thinking about is three to five years down the line, during intense training sessions, I imagine being in the middle of a performance I'm dreaming about and am able to give 
100% to the set or the interval that on that day it's feeling harder than usual. Maybe this is the moment when you are getting a fraction of a percent closer to this goal, even if it's mentally closer. That's huge. All these individual training sessions are like little water drops that you are trying to fill up a gallon bucket with. And if you skip adding that one drop, the bucket will stay empty longer. So I highly recommend visual visualizing. Sorry, ESL is a long-term problem for me. I don't know if I will ever be able to do the Rainier Infinity Loop, like I mentioned earlier, or link up Everest and Lhotse without supplemental oxygen. In fact, I will probably never gonna attempt the latter because I can't afford it, but it doesn't matter. Dreaming about it while exercising on certain days can be truly magical for motivation in the moment. Maybe a little delusional, but that's how dreams start. My advice is have a few delusional goals. If all you are looking forward to is your morning coffee, that's no fun. Measurable can mean I went to the gym, completed the workout, lost two pounds in two weeks, climbed a particular route, or finished a race. Like I said earlier, the goal has to be relevant to you and you need clear timelines for different goals. When it comes to choosing a goal, it doesn't matter if you are training for a 5K, a difficult ice climb, single pitch rock route, a 50 mile ultramarathon, or simply want to lose 10 pounds to look better or feel healthier. You need a goal that isn't only sexy on paper but you have to truly want it. If you are training for a marathon or to climb Mount Rainier to get a t-shirt stating you have done so, it will be a lot harder to train because truly you don't give a damn about the process. It's doable, don't get me wrong. External validation can be a legit motivator and for some people it might work better. However, in my experience, it's just much easier for me to be motivated by things truly inspiring to me. I'm not gonna discuss right or wrong reasons for setting goals. I feel like any personal reason is personal. And as long as you are not training to be the world's best serial killer, satisfaction we get from improving at endurance sports is mostly subjective. <laughs> and as long as it's important to you, no matter what is your personal reason, have a blast. Most of the people out there saying, oh, he or she is not doing it for the right reasons are just projecting their own insecurities. And when you hear that next time, assume it's one of those alpinists. If they got laid as often as gym bros, they probably would have better things on their mind. When I was into lifting weights, I never stood there looking at some other guy lifting double of what I can saying, oh, he's obviously doing it for the wrong reasons. Sorry, I have to get back on subject. But a personal example I do have is of a friend who asked me to come up with a training program after he registered for a marathon because he thought it would be cool to do a race, improve cardio while training for it, and in his words, get a shirt that says I ran a marathon. He wanted the reward, but not the process. And when it came to actually going on training runs, he started skipping about half, then tapered to once a week and did not run the race in the end. That's exactly why most New Year's resolutions fail, because people pick goals that are cool and rewarding on paper, but involve hard work, which the individuals are not willing to put in day in and day out. My friend was a climber, and he cared about climbing a lot more. So investing his time into something he didn't truly care about was a waste. As much as you love David Goggins, if you don't love trail running, you will not train for an ultra marathon, nor should you if that's not something you truly care for. So be honest with yourself and decide what is it that you want. Find a goal you are excited about, no matter what your friends think, and it will help you stay consistent and to improve over time. I'll kill Santa and be upfront. 
there are no hacks to improving fitness quickly. Unless you have no training background, have a very high body mass index and lose a significant amount of weight in a healthy manner, or if you start taking steroids, or if you are blessed with the Sharma slash Killian Jornet gene. Otherwise, it's a long-term investment for most of us. So set clear and specific goals, no matter how big or how small they are. Maybe do some journaling to find them. Writing down what you have done, what you want to do, and what you are willing to sacrifice is a great way to find a reasonable short-term goal. Long-term goals I personally pick to be fairly unreasonable, like I said before. But after deciding on something you truly give a damn about, put your race or any desired performance on a calendar so you have a time frame and can have a buildup. At least with an approximate month on the calendar picked out, you will be reminded why you are training. You will have a sense of purpose. I personally love training, probably because I wasn't able to participate in sports till I was older. Athletics played hard to get with me and it worked. Now I don't need the reason to spend three hours on a cardio machine or running up a snowy peak in winter. I just do it. Maybe because my brain size allows for three hours on a treadmill. I don't know. But to increase the amount of boring training, you need a reason and your why question to be answered. Thank you for watching. Like the video as a small thank you if you find the information to be useful. Share it with friends who may find this sort of advice beneficial. My hope is to share a lot more about all things training, how I approach big goals, as well as personal adventures, logistical advice, all things related to mountain climbing, first ascents, and trail running. In the future, I want to talk more about fads, myths, as well as supplements that are likely wasting your money, but can't do it all at the same time. Wish I could download my brain to a flashcard and pass it around, but maybe not since there will be at least 17,000 hours of human centipede playing on repeat. So subscribe if this kind of content is appropriate for you, and I'll probably see you in the next video next week.